hundred years ago, a base in Antarctica looked like this. A lone hut, surrounded by ponies, sled dogs, and frozen crates of supplies. From this hut, Ernest Shackleton struggled and fought to within a hundred miles of the South Pole and returned a hero. Shackleton and 14 men from his British Antarctic expedition lived here through the winter of 1908. He later wrote, the hut was not exactly a palatial residence and we'd suffered many discomforts, but we'd been a very happy little party within its walls. And often when we were far away from even its measure of civilization, it was the Mecca of all our hopes and dreams. Today, the largest outpost in Antarctica is McMurdo Station, a cluster of buildings hugging the frozen shore of Ross Island. This station was built to support science, and the surrounding heights are lined with experiments and sensors. It takes 700 seasonal workers to run the station and support 200 scientists through the busy summer months. My name is Elaine Hood. The science that the National Science Foundation funds to be done in Antarctica is science that can't be done anywhere else on Earth. And there is no hardware store down the street. There is no fuel station down the street. We have to provide all of that for this research at the bottom of the world. Heavy equipment is everywhere, wheeled or tracked, for moving snow, dirt, cargo, or people. Up ahead, three orange deltas and Ivan the Terabus wait to haul passengers to and from the airfields, an hour away on the Ross Ice Shelf. McMurdo freely mixes old and new, Navy buildings from the 1960s are a short walk from high-tech science labs. Lashed wood Nansen sleds designed in the 1800s share space with custom vehicles seen nowhere else on Earth. When equipment breaks, they fix it here, the heavy shop. The heavy shop is basically one large open bay large enough for us to pull the really large vehicles in there and do all of the maintenance on them. If the parts aren't available, the mechanics come down to the machine shop and I can usually make something happen for them. My name is Keith Collier. Uh, this was my first season at McMurdo Station as the machinist. The way I would describe McMurdo is like a mining town crossed with a very small college campus crossed with a military barracks. And with it being so isolated, anything that goes wrong there, we pretty much have to take care of ourselves to keep the base and the science going. Thanksgiving begins with a turkey trot. McMurdo builds intense friendships. There are no cell phones, few pagers, a slow internet, and little use for social media when everyone eats three meals a day together. People here take pride in being just a little bit weird, and they take their costumes very seriously. Some joke that when you shake the world, the most interesting people fall to the bottom. Over the hill from McMurdo is Scott Base, a New Zealand outpost of neat green buildings. Weddell seals wean their pups where the sea ice buckles and splits against the shore and a Kiwi sledge team practices for a friendly race against the Americans. Everybody needs their little moment of solitude sometimes, and that's hard to find at McMurdo. My name is Laura Gerwin, and I am a shuttle driver at McMurdo. I love being up close and personal with these seals. In, if it's really quiet, you can hear a seal breathe. You can hear the sounds the seals make under the ice when you find those quiet, peaceful moments in McMurdo.
when I first arrived at McMurdo, the runway is on the ice. So when you step off and it's just nothing but flat white, it's kind of shocking. It's like being on a different planet. It's such our normal daily life down there that you kind of forget that you're out driving on an ice shelf at the bottom of the world. We're on the same road every day, but it always looks different depending on weather and the clouds and the blowing snow. Even though the sun's up the whole season that I'm down there, there's still a difference in the light. The food is better than the powdered peas and boiled mutton of a century ago. Fresh bread, lemon bunt cake, and 100 pounds of granola a week. One of the things that we love about Antarctica is the fact that there are no cell phones. So when you sit around and eat breakfast or you're eating dinner, nobody's sitting there scrolling through Facebook. You're having a face-to-face -face conversation. And the lack of interruption by technology most of us like it. Weather is the talk of the station and the great breaker of schedules. Snow, wind, or clouds can keep scientists at McMurdo or in the field for unexpected days or weeks. Antarctica is a desert, the coldest, driest, windiest continent on Earth. You can feel it in chapped lips, static shocks, and chronic dehydration. Fire is the greatest threat to the station, and the 55 men and women of the Antarctic Fire Department operate the most southerly firehouse in the world. As the summer winds down, work turns toward the future. In mid-January, the American icebreaker Polar Star will cut through the sea ice to this dark, frozen pier of ice and reinforcing cable. A cargo ship will follow, bringing six million pounds of supplies and food for the new year. When the ships leave, most McMurdo residents will start to pack up. The sun last set in October and will set again in February and finally disappear for the long Antarctic winter. Some people will work a summer here and never return the one and dunners. Some will head home to rejoin family and mainland jobs, then return in October. But for a few, this remote outpost of ice and ash is home. They will travel, wander, explore through the northern summer and plan to return with the Antarctic sun. <laughs>